welcome. So today I'm going to I'm going to walk you through the chapter 2 homework for BA211 Principles of Accounting 1. So I'm going to walk you through the homework. I'm not necessarily going to do all the homework, but I'm going to give you some examples of how to complete some of the tricky parts of the homework. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is problem number one. You may have different numbers. Most likely you will have different numbers for your problem set than, than is shown here. But what I need you to do is just uh, look at the how I do it, right? So th the idea of this is we're, we're setting up a T account, right? And so for T accounts, you have the debit side and the credit side. So for example, on cash here, the debit side is going to include the $110, $310, and the $30, right? So if we add all those up, and it's good when you do some of these things uh, to, to be able to just have your, have a scratch piece of paper that you can write stuff down on. So uh, my calculator here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up all of the debit side, right? So you got all the debit side. So the debit side is $450. And then I know that cash normally has a balance on the debit side, right? So it's a, and it's an asset. It's actually our number one asset. So I know that the balance is going to be a debit balance. So what I can do, I'm gonna add up my debit column first. Then I'm gonna go ahead and subtract out the credit side, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and minus 60, minus 70. And so my balance is 320, that's a debit balance. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that here, 320. And so that should be my answer and we can check the work on that just to make sure, okay? Does that make sense? So you're gonna add up the columns as you go through here. Cash is gonna be a debit balance. Accounts payable as well as an asset, it's gonna be a debit balance. Supplies is an asset, it will be a debit balance as well. Accounts receivable will be also a debit balance and wages payable, this is a liability. So all, all these on top here, the four on top are gonna to be assets. This wages payable here on the left side, on the bottom is a liability. It most likely would have a, a credit balance, but these are equal, right? 710 on the debit, 710 on the credit. So really our balance is gonna, for this one is gonna be zero. Right, so it's going to be zero on there. Right, so and then also uh, cash. Most likely, this is going to be a debit balance as well. So if you can at least start in that side of the account, that's one way to work through the balances when you do T accounts. Is you got to first know what is the normal balance on your on the account that you're working in with. Most likely, it is is going to work out as a debit balance or a credit balance. So this is the next exercise, this is number two. And what we're doing here is we're having, uh, it says follow, the following are transactions of a new company called uh, Pose for Picks, right? So it's a picture uh, ph photography company. And so what you're gonna need to do is you're going to need to walk, work through each one of these and create the right journal entry. Um, there's several ways to do this. Uh, some people like to start with the, the actual numbers themselves and figure out what the numbers on debits and credit side. Uh, or some people like to work with the accounts. So I, I personally like to work with the accounts first and in a manner like this, right? So for example, debits come first, right? So when we're looking at debits, we're thinking, okay, what is going to be my debit in this case? Where an owner invests cash and equipment into the company. So cash is an asset, photography equipment is an asset, it's coming into the company, so it's gonna be a debit, it's gonna be an increase to that at those assets. So those are gonna be my accounts. You can also do type in, for example, the first couple of letters and it'll come up, right? And then the credit, I have to have a, a credit account, right? M Harris Capital, there we go. So that's my credit. Uh, so. So that's what I like to do first is the accounts. You can do it any way you want to. The, the key part of making journal entries is this. There's gonna be at least one debit, at least one credit. 
it's not limited to just one and one. It could be, if for, like in this case, it could be two debits and one credit. So here we go, we're gonna put in our two debits and our one credit is going to be uh, both of those added up. So it's gonna be 6,500 plus 27,950 and that's gonna give us our credit. Three, 34,450. So uh, when you check, when you do lots of journal entries, uh, depending on how, what system you're using, in this one, we have to check ourselves. In some systems, when you do journal entries, some accounting systems, it'll tell you if you're in balance or out of balance. So the other thing is you need at least one debit, at least one credit, you could have more on, on either side, but the debits and the credits have to balance right, with every journal entry. And so uh, the debits, these two debits have to equal that one credit in this case. So we're gonna go ahead and go through the rest of these. And when, uh, one, one important account to make things easier on yourself to note is anytime there's the word cash in any of these journal entries, cash is going to be one of your accounts you're gonna use, right? Cash, cash. All these are all these are cash, cash, right? So all these are going to include uh, the cash account. If you're receiving money into the company, that's a debit to cash. If you're paying money out, like this one, paid eight hundred and seventy-six dollars cash, that's going to be a credit to cash. Problem number three. So we're going to use the above information to prepare an August income statement for the business. You do have to pick the correct uh, date configuration at the top of this. So for the month ended August 31st, this is an income statement. So what you're looking at with an income statement is you're saying this is activity uh, that happened during the month, right? Does that make sense? For the month ended, for the entire month. And if you have a, like a balance sheet, for example, you're gonna pick a, as of August 31st because the balance sheet is the type of financial statement that's taking a picture of a balance at a certain moment. Exactly this, at this second when I pulled the balance sheet, it is this balance. What the income statement shows is movement, right, from zero to however much, right? Counts, to, be, to begin with, we have, uh, this is an income statement. Assets are in the balance sheet. Liabilities are in the balance sheet. Equities in the balance sheet. Revenues, we're gonna start there. Our next section down here, we're gonna go down through and the expenses. Revenues minus expenses equal net income or loss. It depends on what it is. It could, it could be uh, an in income if revenues are more than expenses, a loss if uh, expenses are more than revenues, right? So that's those are a couple things to make sure you put in there is all of these uh, cells that I just populated are usually the ones that people miss. Okay, and then we're gonna go up here and we're gonna pick out from our uh, accounts which ones go into the income statement. Something important to note is the how the chart of account is built. Trial balance, the chart of accounts, it follows that order. Assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, expenses. So it's nice to know. So what goes in, in here? It's gonna be our revenue. So we're gonna start up here with consulting fees earned. And we're gonna also use the expenses. So only this these last five accounts we're gonna use. Problem number four. Use the above information to prepare an August statement of owner's equity for this company. The owner's capital account balance at as of July 31st is zero because we're just starting up, right? August 1st is our first um, day of the, as a business. The owner invested $100,500, right? In cash in the company at that date. So what changes owner's equity? So again, this is for the month ended and we are going to start here with opening balance. One of the tricks here is opening balance as of August 31st is zero, it tells us. So we're gonna start with zero, which is a little tricky on that. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our income, which is what we just calculated back in the last, uh, on the last problem, number three. We should be able to bring that net income forward. 
Uh, oh, we got investments first. Investments by owner, which it tells us up top. We're going to bring forth our net income and add all those things up. And then at the very, in the very bottom, we've got our net loss. And we also have withdrawals by owner. So those are all of our accounts that are going to line up there. It's not a net loss. It's actually a net gain, right? I don't think we had, if we had an income, we don't have anything else then. So that's going to be what it is. There we go. So we don't have net loss. We just have our net income. On the top side, we've got, uh, let's, let's get our date here. So our dates are going to be, let's make sure we get our date set. Right, okay, uh, July 31st is gonna be our date. I had the wrong date on there to begin with. So those are our accounts, then you just plug and play. Hard, hardest one probably is net income, right? That's gonna come from our last problem. We're gonna pull that over and use it, which is our revenues minus all of our expenses. So now we're gonna prepare a balance sheet. So uh, on this one, okay, we're gonna start as of, right? This is different than the other statements. And then we're gonna have our assets on one side. We're gonna have our liabilities. Then we're gonna have equity. The assets, like I said, it's gonna be the first five accounts. Cash, accounts receivable, office supplies, land, office equipment. Those are our assets. We're gonna line those up with the balances. Liabilities, we only have one, accounts payable. Equity, the equity that we're gonna put on here is not the withdrawals. That was, we took care of that in a statement of owner's equity, which was our last problem, problem number four. All we need to bring forward is that bottom number that we came up with in equity on problem number four, our new equity number. And that will make everything balance. In the end, these two zeros at the bottom that we see here, the bottom of this balance sheet, should be, once we put all the numbers in, the same number. That's why it's called a balance sheet. It's got to equal. It's got to be the, the accounting equation as a financial statement. Okay, we've got problem number six. So with this one, we're going to go through the process again. We're going to create our journal entries. We're going to do our uh, general ledger, which is done for us, right? Our trial balance is going to be done for us. Then we're going to go ahead and build, make sure we got our income statement here. Really all we have to answer on this one is down on the bottom. Income statement is going to flow into, we just went through the process before, income statement is transferred to statement of owner's equity. Then we're going to go to statement of owner's equity. This equity that we come up with is going to be transferred to the balance sheet. And then at the end of the balance sheet, the, master, the balance in the master capital account comes from the equity statement. So we're just going backwards on this one. We're not going forward because the balance sheet is the end of the financial statement roll up. So the trial balance is our statement is our accounts that were that are all listed from asset liabilities, equity, revenues, and expenses that will help us if we need to build any of these. I think they're all in there for us. Then in the end, what we're gonna do here is we do our financial statement impact. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the you can do it two different ways. Okay, and it has this little hint here. It says you can check your answers by selecting the date of the trial balance tab. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to uh, just go back to your journal entries and each journal entry is going to be a line on the financial statement impact, right? So our journal entry, for example, for December 1st is already here. We see it on here. See the assets coming in? That's gonna increase equity. Uh, number two and three are also on here. So we're really starting with December 4th. And we can go back and we can look at we can look at the journal entries as they come in and think about it. We can even draw it out on a piece of scrap paper how what, what accounts it's going to impact. Okay, so that's one way to do it. It's just kind of lay each journal entry out and, and do this uh, on this sheet. That's a good way to start. Another way to check it is going to be this. So once we once we uh, get to this point and get all of our information in, we can go to the trial balance and actually narrow the dates down. So December 1st to December 4th, for example. We can narrow that date down, and then that will actually tell us, okay, so that's gonna actually limit, the trial balance limits what goes through to the income statement, to the statement of owner's equity, and to the balance sheet. 
what you're going to be able to do is you're going to say, okay, where's the net income? Net income's on the income statement. We narrow our dates down on the trial balance. Then we go and look at our income statement and say, okay, did it impact the income? Yes or no? It, how, by how much? Net income. If the net income still still zero here, then it's going to be no impact and it'll be zero. Then we're going to look over where's total assets. It's in the balance sheet. Did our total assets change? Uh, did our liabilities change? Did our equity change? So we're going to look at that on our balance sheet and our on our statement of owner's equity. Uh, we can look at the equity as well on there, right? That's where equity is going to be found. It's going to be found on both places. Liabilities and assets are only going to be on the balance sheet. So that's one way you can do your checking your answers by selecting the date of the trial balance is by flipping this date that's over here in the trial balance and then going through and looking at your financial statements. This is going to be more of the same. This is going to be more of the same. Same same scenario where you can flip that trial balance and look back and, and see how it goes. And then problem number eight is gonna, going to be uh, and the impact on equity, okay? And so we're gonna have right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, look at the equity side of things. So um, in one, in some ways, uh, so, so what impacts equity? I guess is the question that to ask and this is something to know, right? So what increases equity? Investments are gonna increase equity, right? When an owner invests in a company. Uh, when an owner withdraws from a company, the withdrawal account decreases equity. What else increases equity? Well, when uh, revenue comes in. When revenue is recorded, equity goes up. And then on the opposite side, what decreases equity? When expenses are recorded, equity goes down. So really only those four things at this time really is gonna impact equity. As we look at, at this, uh, that's those are our four things. Investments are increase, revenues are increase. Withdrawals are decrease, expenses are decreases. So as, as we look at those four things, if it's not an investment, if it's not a withdrawal, if it's not a revenue, if it's not an expense, then put no change in equity. And then that'll, that'll tell us uh, that there is no impact on equity. If, to look at the number, right, what is the impact on equity? You're gonna wanna look back at your journal entries that you're doing here with each of these. Each of these lines is a journal entry. So as you look at your journal entry, you're gonna be able to quantify the impact on equity as you look at your numbers here that you use in the journal entry. If I, negative numbers, they may want, and this is something with this tool, they may want negative numbers entered in as a negative. So just to keep in mind, if something's not accepting an answer from you, uh, you may want to flip it to a negative, right? If it's looking at, for example, impact on equity. Let's look down here on the, so on the withdrawals, for example, right here very bottom one, it's a decrease in equity as withdrawal, okay? And it'll, it gives you the number there, but it's gonna, it's a negative uh, format. Those uh, parentheses on there, those are, is, a, is a negative number. So just so you know, that's something that comes up in this software as well as we're putting things in, into this. So hopefully this helps you. Any other questions, feel free to contact me and I will help you out and get you pointed in the right direction. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you had a good time. Feel free to subscribe to my channel uh, or comment on this video. We'll see you in class.